So, distributed machine learning. You guys made some big announcements this week. Uh, can you give us a little uh, update on that? And sure. How that fits in with you and your customers? Absolutely. So, you know, we, we, were, we announced machine learning and made it available as a public preview back in July. Um, and so it's a great service that allows customers to very quickly build new machine learning models and distribute them as, as APIs. What we announced that's new at this conference is now a machine learning marketplace that allows data scientists to build models and now monetize them through a very friction-free marketplace model. So we're really trying to do to data science what's been done with the App Store uh, and other platforms. Nice. And uh, following up on some other stuff that you've got going on, the uh, last year at Strata and Hadoop World, you guys announced the availability of Microsoft Azure HD Insight. That's right. What's the customer response been, and uh, how's the response to that product shaped Microsoft's approach? Yeah, you know, it's, it was a great milestone last year when we announced HD Insight at Strata. We G8 it, it was their first big foray into big data. Uh, since then, we've released a an appliance that includes our in-memory column store from SQL Server with the Hadoop region on-premises. We've added a lot of features to HD Insight in the cloud. We've announced our machine learning and released that as a preview. Uh, no SQL store, a search, Power BI. We've done so much since then. It's really been exciting. Specifically around HD Insight, though, we're seeing a lot of momentum on customers that are looking to take advantage of Hadoop to process new kinds of data in new scenarios. Specifically, the three that we're seeing most often are IoT scenarios, so sensor data that I want to bring in to uh, Hadoop and do predictive maintenance on it for, say, elevators or escalators, those kinds of things. Uh, we're seeing clickstream analysis for websites being really, really popular. And then the third one we're seeing is kind of a cloud ETL, where customers are trying to ingest documents transform them and then put them into an uh, on-premises system, as an example. So really some interesting scenarios that we're starting to see evolve over the last year. Excellent. Also, you've had a partnership with Hortonworks for the past three years. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the evolution of that and how it's established and how it's been going, how, how it's, what it's enabled both of you guys to accomplish. Sure. So um, you know, about three years ago, we were looking at this big data space. And we had some internal technology called Dryad that would allow you to do similar map reduce kinds of um, and interactive queries on unstructured data. But we saw so much momentum building around Hadoop. We decided to, rather than release and bring our own technology to market, we wanted to focus on the open source community. And so Hortonworks ended up being a great partner for us because together we could bring Hadoop to Windows, bring Hadoop to Azure, yet still contribute back to the community. And so we actually now have committers that are Microsoft employees that are committing code back to Apache Hadoop. We work very closely with Hortonworks to make that happen. So it's been a nice journey over the last couple of years. Um, and even at this show today, we've been able to announce um, some great new uh, features or capabilities that are coming in due, due to the partnership. So with Hortonworks' HDP platform version 2.2, which will release, release here soon, um, we've got some very cool features in there like an automatic backup to Azure Blob Store. So imagine you've got a Hadoop cluster on premises and you want to create a backup to it. It's just a simple, simple step, and now you can back it up to the cloud, super cheap, very easy to use. And now once that data is in Azure, you can do things like machine learning to it really easily. So we're excited about the partnership and the kind of features that it's bringing to, to the market. Excellent. I want to talk about uh, the big picture a little bit here. What are the, um, there are a lot of elements that you guys have going on, and uh, there are a lot of industry trends. Um, what do you see as the big trends and driving, driving your strategy? Yeah, you know, so it's interesting. I was I was kind of reflecting on this the last couple of stratas, both here and in Santa Clara, and how the themes have changed. And if I think back to about two years ago, it was about, hey, there's this thing called Hadoop, and we use MapReduce to get value out of it. And then the next strata was, well, now there's Hive, and I can do interactive query over the data, and that's faster and more interesting. And now it's Storm, um, and now I want to do real-time com complex event processing, and that's kind of the new thing right now. Um, but looking forward in this strata more than any other, it feels like the strata of the data scientist. So data science, machine learning, predictive analytics, this more, much more so than even Santa Clara just a few months ago, this feels like a big theme of this one that I can only believe that moving forward, we're going to get more and more into that theme of machine learning, data scientists, really taking that data and rather than simply looking at what happened in the past, let's predict the future and make decisions based on that data using these new machine learning technologies. So those are the big trends that I'm seeing at least in the last couple of shows. And it's very consistent with our strategy 
of bringing machine learning to the masses. Excellent. Thank you so much. Excellent, Tim. Thanks for, for glad to be here.